Virgin Atlantic's really proud of its innovative history, but I'm not going to focus about anything on this slide today. What we do want to focus on is what we've been working on in the pricing and revenue management space. Now, if we rewind a little bit, the Virgin Atlantic setup for PRM is, I think, very standard. Um, we have a pricing team, um, really high quality people, uh, but the process is really standard. So we've got ATP co-filings, we are doing segmentation, we are doing um, um, segmentation, seasonality, very standard uh, pricing. Also, we've got revenue management and a very standard revenue management system, forecasting demand at a class level, and we're uh, positioning ourselves accordingly. What we actually want, though, is to fix some of the flaws within that. What we find is that there's no way the analysts, regardless of how high quality they are, can really focus on delivering everything to be optimally positioned all the time. Thousands of flights each, constantly looking at competitor A being priced here, competitor B being priced there. Here's what the RM system gives us a forecast. Here's our load factor. Here's our gaps to last year. Impossible to try and get those perfectly positioned every time. What we wanted to focus on is how we Put, have one system that has all of our data in it and the system can understand exactly all the variables, how important they are, how correlated they are, and to choose an offer appropriate for that point in time. That's where we've started working with Fetcher with their generative AI to deliver that for us. Going forward, where we currently are is we give Fetcher all of our data on a daily basis. They take that data, put it into their generative AI, it kicks out offers, they go and file those offers on our behalf, overrule our own systems, and put them into market with no human intervention at all. So we've gone from very legacy-based analysts applying things to a system which is totally automated. Better AI drives us into offers into the market, including all the variables in real time, continually pushing into market. It's incredibly detailed, so we do it at a flight by flight level, cabin by cabin level for all of our points of sale. There's no limit on the uh, filing volumes that Fetcher can do. Our constraint is actually with ATP Co and GDSs trying to mimic it down so that nothing falls over, but theoretically we can do anything we like. Fetcher isn't constrained by the amount of information we give it, so our constraint is actually on the Virgin Atlantic side and how frequently we can pass our data over to them so it can recompute and try and find the best offer at ex exactly the same time. Totally automated. Nobody has any intervention in this at all. So all of our data automatically gets passed over every single day. Fetch it, calculate the offer and put it into market with nobody looking at it. What we then do is have people at the end of the process focused on understanding exactly what the AI has done and finding a way to say, do we think that is crazy good, crazy bad, or something other? We have a reporting suite that Fetcher developed for us so we can understand exactly, I think if you were in the session earlier from Uri and Yuval, you may have seen that. Um, we get that. We've also got the explainability pieces where we can understand exactly the rationale for each of the offers moving. There's actually three challenges uh, that we've had. So how we've got from um, the inception of wanting to do link up with um, Fetcher and have generative AI driving our offers to where we are today. Three sets of challenges, but I'll talk about two of them here today. So the first one is around the infrastructure. Whatever we do with Fetcher needed to work with exactly what we already had. Don't have any CapEx, can't do too much development on our side, needs to fit with our existing solutions. The second one was how do we know that the AI is working? How do we know it's coming up with um, better offers than what we currently do and it would be revenue positive to do so? And then the third one, which I'm not actually going to talk about today, is how do we bring along the team, our internal stakeholders in Virgin Atlantic, but also the trade partners that we work with across the world on making sure that they understand how they're dealing with it and take them on that journey with us. Just to focus on the first one, though, um, so how does it work with what we've already got? Fetcher can take all of the data we have. It's all in different formats. Sometimes um, things that represent the same um, fields are actually called different things. They're in different styles of calling flight numbers, etc., etc. We just pass it all over to Fetcher and they deal with that. 
The second piece around um, having um, seamless integration, so again, needs to link with ATPCO, um, needs to link with our internal systems. Fetching needs to be able to build that for us, publish it for us with no human intervention and be able to do it uh, totally independently. It needs to work with multiple databases, as I've mentioned, a lot of different stuff coming across in different uh, formats. And then uh, we are giving all of our feeds, so all of our infare, all of our uh, booking information, all of our ticketing information, all of our ATP co-fares. Everything is being passed to um, Fetcher, and so it doesn't matter about the amount of data within there. It needs to be absorbed and be part of the equation to go and create the offer. On the trust side, a few different elements on here. So one is around having explainability, and we'll come on more in a second on explainability about how we've got that working. Um, we've also done A-B testing. So this is a kind of man versus machine, except the man element, woman element, wasn't really uh, people anyway. It was systems layered over with analysts doing manipulation, influencing, lots of other stuff on top of it, but it needed to beat our existing processes. Putting things into two different buckets allowed us to test whether the AI was actually driving incremental value. Gradual scaling, so we started off really small. Here's just a handful of flights to go and put the AI uh, logic into and go and file our fares. But over time, we've given more and more and more data, more flights, more card control, more markets to fetch it to be able to go and do it up. So we've built it up over time so that we could buy into exactly what the offers being made was and it wasn't doing us any revenue damage. It's cloud-based, so again, it fits in with our technology um, um, uh, strategies and allows us to scale up really quickly. Then, if, again, if you were in the earlier session with Fetcher, you'll have seen this. But here is the LLM that we're now looking at. So we're really proud of where we've got to today, going from with very little technological development on Virgin Atlantic's side, we've gone from having file fares through ATP Co, very traditional setup, into having generative AI offers live in market. But what we're really excited by is the next step. In conversations with Fetcher, we've been talking about how we get better ability to understand exactly the glass box. How do we interrogate what's going on with the AI? How do we understand what it's doing and why it's doing it? They've developed with using some of the large language modules uh, like ChatGPT for us to be able to have an interface where we can Convers uh, have conversation with the AI, ask it anything, get responses, understand exactly what it's doing, why it's doing it. And this can start off from the quite simple with what was our sales intakes on one given day, tell me about what the load factor is, some of the things that we already have in some of our existing reports. But we can build up and layer over with some of the more complex items. So move into tell me what a competitor's pricing strategy has been, educate me on exactly how they've changed their inventory over time. Then we can broaden it out even further into strategic analysis over, have we got the right capacity on the market? Where, where else should we be thinking about progressing? And this becomes much more than a PRM tool and much more into a full commercial system that we can utilize to interpret all of our data that we've got together with exactly where uh, the opportunities for development are. We think this is pretty groundbreaking. Um, really proud of where we've got to, but really excited about where we're going to go next. Um, we think this is the work of the future. And to expand more on exactly what the next steps are, um, to delve into some of the magics behind it, I'll now hand over to Uri. Thank you, Chris. Hi, everyone. I am Uri Oshalmi, Chief AI Officer and co-founder at Fetcher. So as I said before, we in Fetcher, we specialize in generative AI in the market context. And currently, we are focused on leveraging algorithmic trading techniques to enhance revenue for airlines. And as such, we believe that to be able to do so, it's not enough to have cutting edge AI technology. It's also very important to be able to seamlessly integrate that technology into airlines and to have zero risk onboarding processes, all of that while respecting the existing frameworks at the airline. So we are proud to have had the chance to select airlines to work with that are true trailblazers, airlines that are 
willing to be at the forefront of innovation. And we have also chosen these airlines so that we will have a wide variety of categories of airlines to work with. Categories not only in the geographical sense, but also size-wise and cost-wise. Some of the airlines benefiting from our systems are represented here. So you may wonder about the applicability of generative AI in market context. We all know generative AI in the, the context of text or language, like in ChatGPT. Generative AI in the image context is well represented by Midjourney or DAL-E types of models. We have a similar approach, civil, similar architecture of models, but with some type of a twist where we generate some multidimensional representations of the anticipated market dynamics. In these representations, there are some type of pixels, but these are not visual pixels. These are pixels that incorporate some type of probability, either probability related to purchase intentions or probability related to anticipated price positioning of certain competitor or to the question, how fast is the competitor going to react and match, and, and so on. Here is an overview, high-level overview of our system. Initially, we consolidate data from various sources. These sources include the data from the airline itself. We also cross-validate that data with data from several key data providers either within the industry or out of the industry. We also have our own data mining techniques. All of that data is cross-validated and integrated into a certain data lake that is used to feed the language model that I mentioned before. That language model generates the anticipated market dynamics, which is then used to feed our detailed simulation engine. The simulation engine scans the whole space of possible pricing policies, simulates every flight, every passenger buying tickets in a very intensive computational type of, uh, of calculation and chooses the pricing policy that is expected to generate highest reward for the airline. Highest reward can be, for example, highest revenue but also other types of rewards are relevant here. Once the prices are chosen and decided, they are automatically published throughout the either airline uh, systems or third parties like ATP. Once such a system is in place, we see a transformation of market dynamics. Market dynamics, very similar to what we know in NASDAQ and capital markets. This market dynamics has very gradual price changes because every time a hint flows from the market, it causes a reaction. And the market dynamics is very uncorrelated because we see and simulate every OD, every flight, every passenger separately. So the changes here are uncorrelated and the prices are much more variant compared to the prices before the system integration. That enables a system that is very responsive to changes in the market and at the same time very proactive, allowing dictation of new regimes in the prices. Okay, so here you should have seen some green line that is not shown. But anyway, uh, once such a system is in place, we can see some measurable results. These results sh show an exploration phase where the system go back and forth yeah okay where the system uh, senses the market studies how does the market behave and what is the dynamics in the market after the exploration phase is uh, in place we see an exploitation phase the system exploiting the knowledge that it has generated from the airline. The exploitation shows a revenue uplift between 6 and 
that's based on pure A-B testing, where we are not comparing the revenue this year to last year. This A-B testing is much more um, scientific, where we are comparing the re revenue in the, uh, in the lines, in the ODs, in the flights that we are managing to collated flights that are not being managed by the system. And by that comparison, we can show a very much more accurate uh, revenue uplift. Thank you for listening. For more information, we are at booth 1228. Thank you.